Greetings. This is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's teaching is entitled The Lie of Jacob's Trouble. That is the lie of Jacob's trouble. Many Israelites mistakenly believe that at some point in the future, we will experience suffering like never before in a time referred to as Jacob's trouble. In other words, they think that we, the Israelites, will suffer more than our forefathers did during the transatlantic slave trade. The pale-faced people hunted our forefathers and foremothers like animals, and they raped and lynched them on a massive scale. Israelite babies were kept in cages and used as alligator bait. Our skins were used to make shoes and purses for the pale-faced people. Yet we are expected to believe that all that suffering was nothing compared to what we will supposedly experience in the time referred to as Jacob's Trouble. This erroneous idea of Jacob's trouble comes from Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 in Christian and Jewish Bibles. Today, I will expose this false doctrine and answer the following questions. 1. What exactly is Jacob's trouble? 2. What is the true meaning of Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7? And three, when will this prophecy be fulfilled? Question number one. What exactly is Jacob's trouble? Jacob's trouble is a false doctrine about great suffering that will supposedly come upon the Israelites, also known as Jacob, in the last days. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 in the King James Version of the Christian Bible says this, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So according to this deception, the Israelites, also known as Jacob, will experience a time of trouble like never before in history. That's the meaning of, so that none is like it. This deception, like many others, comes from the corrupt Masoretic text that Christian and Jewish Bibles are translated from. On the other hand, the Septuagint, which dates back to 250 years before the invention of Christianity, does not support this false doctrine. As a Septuagint was translated hundreds of years before the Masoretic text, we can use it to discover what the Holy Scriptures actually said before the Jewish deceivers got their grubby hands on them. Question number two. What is the true meaning of Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7? Jeremiah chapter 30 in the Christian Bible is Jeremiah chapter 37 in the Septuagint. I'll be reading from the Brenton Septuagint translation. That's Jeremiah chapter 37 verses 4 to 9. Jeremiah chapter 37 verses 4 to 9 reads thus, And these are the words which the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. Thus said the Lord, Ye, meaning Israel and Judah, shall hear a sound of fair. There is fair and there is not peace. Enquire and see if a male has born a child. So Israel and Judah, which is a ye, is being told to enquire and see if a male has born a child. 
and ask concerning the fair wherein they that some of the people that is not Israel and Judah Israel and Judah is the ye that is being addressed and Israel and Judah ye are being told to inquire and see if a male has born a child wherein they the other people shall hold their loins Israel and Judah shall not be holding our loins because the destruction is not coming on us. It is coming on them, the other people. It continues and look for safety. For I have seen every man and his hands are on his loins. Their faces, it does not say your faces, Israel and Judah, but their faces, the other people's faces, those people who have their hands on their loins, their faces are turned to paleness. Israel and Judah are so-called black people. Our faces do not turn to paleness. This they is not referring to us. Again, the word ye is plural for you. It is referring to the children of Israel, which is Israel and Judah. The word they is referring to another group of people who will hold their loins as they wet themselves to fear because their destruction has finally come. It is the pale-faced people who will turn even more pale as the blood drains from their faces when they see the giants of the Most High coming to destroy them for what they have done to his people. For details of the annihilation of our pale-faced oppressors, please listen to my teaching entitled, The Day of the Lord. That is, the Day of the Lord. Verse 7, For that day is great, and there is not such another. And it is a time of straightness to Jacob, but he shall be saved out of it. The word straightness comes from the root word straight. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines the word straight as a situation of confusion or distress. Because someone is in a situation of confusion or distress does not mean that the trouble is theirs. They can be confused or distressed about someone else's trouble. Most Israelites will experience confusion or distress on the day of the Lord because they will not understand why their pale-faced idols are being slain by giants. For hundreds of years, our people have been brainwashed to idolize the pale-faced oppressor. Therefore, it will be very confusing and distressing to see the pale-faced people begging for their lives while the giants of the Most High tear them into pieces with their bare hands. Verse 8. In that day, said the Lord, I will break the yoke of their neck and will burst their bonds and they shall no longer serve strangers. When that day comes, when our pale-faced oppressors are destroyed, that will be the end of our servitude, the end of our slavery, the end of our captivity. And that's why the Most High says that in that day, that is the day of the Lord, he will break the yoke of our neck, he will burst our bonds, and we will no longer serve strangers. Verse 9, but 
They shall serve the Lord their God. We will only serve the Most High. We will no longer serve the false God and idol of our Christian slave masters, the one they call JC, but we will serve the Most High only. And I will raise up to them David their king. It is in this day that our captivity will finally come to an end. We will never have to serve our enemies again. We will serve the Most High only and he will raise up or resurrect King David to rule over us in the coming kingdom. To learn more about this fact, please listen to my teaching entitled The Resurrection of the Righteous. That is, the Resurrection of the Righteous. Question number three. When will this prophecy be fulfilled? Jeremiah chapter 37 in the Brenton Septuagint translation is chapter thirty. In the KJV, I'll be reading verses 23 to 24. That's Jeremiah chapter 37, verses 23 to 24. It says, For the wrathful anger of the Lord has gone forth. Even a whirlwind of anger has gone forth. It shall come upon the ungodly. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he shall execute it and until he shall establish the purpose of his heart. And the purpose of his heart is to deliver the children of Israel from captivity and to destroy the pale-faced oppressor. It continues, In the latter days ye shall know these things. We shall know these things in the latter days because we will see them with our own eyes in the latter days. We are now in the latter days. This is when this prophecy will be fulfilled in the latter days. This prophecy continues into the next chapter. So I'll be reading Jeremiah chapter 38 verse 1 and verses 7 to 8. Jeremiah chapter 38 in the Brenton Septuagint translation is chapter 31 in the KJV. And I'm reading verse 1 and verses 7 to 8. Verse 1. At that time, saith the Lord, I will be a God to the family of Israel, and they shall be to me our people. This will happen in the latter days. Verse 7. For thus says the Lord to Jacob, Rejoice ye and exalt over the head of the nations. It's saying rejoice over the head of the nations because you're going to rule over the nations. Make proclamation and praise ye. Say, the Lord has delivered his people the remnant of Israel. This is what this prophecy is about. The deliverance of the Israelites and the destruction of our pale-faced oppressors. Verse 8. Behold, I bring them from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of the Passover. To the feast of the Passover. It continues, and the people shall beget a great multitude, and they shall return hither. Not only will our pale-faced oppressors be annihilated in the latter days, but the righteous remnant of Israel will be back in our land in time to celebrate the feast of the Passover. This is another important fact that is missing from Christian and Jewish Bibles. Choose your Bible carefully. In conclusion, Jacob's trouble 
is a false doctrine that is based on the Jewish Masoretic text. When the Most High rescues us in the day of the Lord, it is our pale-faced enemies who will suffer like never before. Jacob has suffered enough. All praises to the Most High. And with that I say, Shalom.